Well, this one can be a challenge. The ball is well above my feet, and this one can really give people fits. If you don't know how to play this one, it can be kind of a nightmare. So always in shots where you have uneven lies, you want to think about where the ball is now. It's not where it's supposed to be. It's in a different place. So I have to alter my stance and alter my swing to accommodate those changes. When I have a ball that's above my feet like this, it's closer to me, first of all, and it's more up in the air. Closer to me, you can imagine if I was on a cliff, the ball would be right next to me. So the ball is going to be closer to me and more up in the air, clearly. You can imagine a really, really steep hill, that ball would be up in the air higher. So to accommodate that ball and where it is with my stance, I'm going to need to make a couple of changes, and that's going to be, first of all, I'm going to grip down on the club. That's going to help me with the ball being closer to me. I'm also going to stand taller. I have to do this because of where the ball is. Imagine that the ball was up in the air this far. You could see I would stand straight up and down just about. So standing taller, gripping down, those are the stance changes that you're going to make. When it comes to the swing, we have to match our swing to where the ball is as well. With the ball up in the air like this, I have to swing more around like baseball. That matches that swing right to where the ball is. And it's very important when you make that swing change that you swing around on both sides. Now what I mean by that is I'm going to swing around on the back swing, making sure the swing goes a little more level, if you will, more like baseball. But I've also got to swing around on the way through as well. The whole swing has to be shaped this way. Now the reason I mention that is a lot of people will make the stance changes correctly. They'll make the backswing changes correctly too, and then they'll swing down just like normal. Because a normal swing doesn't go like this, it goes a little more up and down than that. So what happens is they'll make a practice swing, they'll go back this way, come down like normal, and hit the ground too hard and too soon. That's the mistake typically on this shot is to go ahead and hit it a little bit fat and on the toe of the club. Now why does it hit on the toe of the club? Because the swing is going down too much. Remember the ball's up there. So if I swing it straight down, it's going to go into the ground early and onto the toe of the club. So the way you get ready for this type of shot is to go ahead and make some practice swings on both sides. You're going to feel around. It's around on the back swing and it's around on the way through very important to make a practice swing and keep doing it until you can brush that ground in the right place. You'll see what I mean when you try it first. You might say, okay, Roger says stand tall. I got that. Grip down. Got that too. Baseball. Great. Okay. Make that practice swing. Whack into the ground right back here. You'll see. It's okay. You're just going to get a sense of feeling around on the way through as well. Now, there's a factor here that's very important also, and that is the ball is not going to want to go straight on a slope like this. It's going to want to jump to the left. Now, you're going to be great at cocktail parties with this one because you're going to know what makes it jump left. Even some tour players don't really know why. If you ask them, well, what makes it go left? Why does it go left? Well, because it just does. It just goes to the left. That's why. And you say, well, wh well why does it go to the left? Because the hill makes it go to the left. That's why the, the hill does it. Well, it's not really the hill, and it's not just because it does. It's because of the loft of the club. The club, when it has loft to it, as you hold it up into the air, it starts to look more to the left. The actual hitting part of the club is facing more left. The more lofted the club is, the more it faces to the left. So you really have to play for that ball jumping off to the left when you're playing this type of shot, especially if you're playing like a sand wedge or a pitching wedge. Now you can see here I'm holding a 7-iron. You can see that when the club is hitting the ground flat, it's basically looking up in the air and forward. Now as I start to hold the club more and more into the air, you can see that the club face is looking more to the left. As I go ahead and take a sand wedge, though, watch what happens. If I take a sand wedge and do the same thing, well, as I tilt it more and more to the side there, it actually looks a great deal more to the left. So the sand wedge is really going to jump off to the side. A long iron, when you have the same situation, a ball above your feet, well, now we've got a situation where I can tilt it this way, and the club face is still looking predominantly forward. So you really want to play for those lofted clubs to jump big time to the left. I had a good player who was lamenting the fact that he missed a qualifying here in the Southern California area, and he was saying, you know, I had it. I had the qualifier, and I hit it out of bounds on the 17th hole. He said the ball was above my feet, and 
and I played for it to hook off the slope, and it didn't hardly at all. I hit it right out of bounds. And I said, well, what club were you hitting? And he said, a three iron. And so I started making that little explanation about the loft and why it goes left, and you could see his face sort of sink because he didn't play it quite right. He said, oh, no, of course, it doesn't jump as much to the left. Now, on the flip side, a pitching wedge or a sand wedge can really jump left. I was playing with a good friend of mine in a tournament, and I happened to be right down the target line there as he was hitting his shot. He had a pitching wedge shot, and the ball was quite exaggerated above his feet. Well, and this is a tour caliber player in, in our area. And so he set up to hit his shot, and the pin was on the right side of the green. He aimed it about 10 feet to the right of the hole. So I thought to myself, either he knows something that I don't know, or this ball's going left. Well, did it ever. It actually started, not only did he miss the whole green, he missed the whole bunker to the left of the green, and missed the rest of the golf course, and flew it about 20 yards out into the desert. So I think what was happening with my friend is he was concerned about the contact he was going to make, and maybe didn't play for it to jump left as much as he should have. So remember those elements, gripping down, standing tall, swinging around like baseball, making some practice swings to make sure you're brushing the ground in the right place. That's going to be very important. If you don't do it correctly, go ahead and try it again until you do, and then you're ready to go. Ball above your feet. It can be a tricky one, but if you make those changes, you'll do just fine.